Yep. <laughs> Each is a bad example. I agree. I agree. But I mean, if you picked, if you picked uh, like a top six team instead of the number one, yeah. and you said, all right, we're going to put this top six team, and we're going to put them against four random top four pros. random top pros. Those random top pros might have a shot at beating that team. And EG just player. happens to be yeah. a couple of freaks. Yep. Either way, we are going to be moving on to game two. This might be the final game of the night. We'll see if Reality Check can close this out 2-0 for the Philippians or if Philippians are going to bring this back and win Team Slayer on the rig. So we'll have that up shortly. I think everyone's just getting in the lobby. We're going to start this game up as soon as possible because I do want to watch as much Halo as possible. But we do have tomorrow and Sunday, so... We do want to sleep as much as yes, possible. Yes, I want to, <laughs> want to get as much sleep as possible, too, because my voice is going to be shot tomorrow if uh, we don't get a good night's rest. But Team Slayer rig, so I still want to find out. It's For me, it seems like Sniper... All right, if I give you the choice, would you rather have Sniper inside on this map or outside control? So, for example, if you're going to go snipe inside because the BR also spawns inside. Okay. As well as camo. And if you have a snipe, there's no way the other team's getting camo, right? They can't go for it. Yeah. So then you can get camo control eventually. Now, think about this, though. So, for example, Scattershot spawns in basement, and Plasma Caster spawns over in nest. So, but outside has. But you get Theoretically, if, if uh, let's say outside has Scattershot and Plasma Caster and inside has Sniper. So you're playing to a disadvantage if you rush the people outside because they have the close-up weapons to beat you. Yep. So you, if you're playing inside, I would say you stay inside. Stay inside, but so if you had a choice Unless of which you squad you'd rather be, would you rather be the inside squad? Just feel like Give me the sniper? inside squad with Snipe. Okay. Let me let me try and pick off somebody. Maybe you get a railgun. Railguns? Oh, uh, railguns only on the Strongholds one. Oh. So they have so they have the different weapon setups for Team Slayer. So for right. example, that's Team Slayer. That's throwing me off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that, that's a little different. From uh, some previous, I kind of like it though because it changes the the and, play style. And that's what I was talking with Valen earlier. Is it must have been something with the pro teams testing it because if you think about it, think about how tough it is already to break an outside setup on rig where a team has basement and nest and they just have like pistols or carbines out there. Right. Now imagine if they had a sniper right. outside as well. You'd it's tough. That, yeah, that shuts down the whole game. side. So maybe that's the the entire reason for why they have the weapons up like that. So taking a lot of that pro feedback from Good the balance. pro gameplays. I think I'm not sure how often BR spawn, but I know it's not long. Twenty so seconds if, to my knowledge is the spawn time for like BR carbine DMR. If you wait inside long enough, your whole team can have BRs. That's a long time though. But I'm yeah, yeah, I guess not for yeah. I guess Team Slayer, you have time on your side, so you could all have right BRs after. Hold on you know, for a minute. You, you all have BRs, BRs. You all have an advantage. Yeah. So who are we kicking off here? I think I have it on with Dramas, the person who scored the third and final flag for Reality Check in the last game. We're gonna see if they can close out 2-0, or if we're gonna go to another game three. So I'm going to eyes on the camo guy. Camo. That's yeah. a big kill. If they Keep can finish around. them off. So Crossfade has camo. I'm gonna switch over to camo because I'm a big fan of seeing power ups and power weapons. And Crossfade just do a good job of staying alive. Watch how he didn't shoot the busted though. We saw that hit marker. Not the the back stop. Stop. not getting his shields back. So Making for those that uh, oh, fire, oh, 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 and he gets I don't know who had that sniper because I was just trying to trying to follow that action. It was just kill after kill, and also trying to commentate some of the slides. It's just like he's just sliding through that hall. Yeah, I saw that the other day, and it, <laughs> I, my mind was really short the slide. I'll be doing that all the time. Do you know how to do it? Let me ask you. You sprint, you crouch. Someone nice, told nice. me that yesterday. <laughs> Someone told you that yesterday. Someone had to tell me. I was like, there's no way I just quit. The guy that did it to me, I was so upset. I was like, I don't know about that challenge from Dome Rock. I mean, I thought he had Sniper. It looks like he eventually died with it. Uh, I believe Stud 2 Stud now has it. But that was a questionable challenge. I'm pretty sure he had Snipe in that situation. Yeah. I got taken out. Could be wrong. Sniper and I don't know who that was. I believe it was Zersky who ended up winning that fight against Sud 2. And this sniper is almost shot cursed. By Everyone who is touching the sniper is nearly dying. It's cursed. It, yeah, it's a cursed weapon, man. I don't to believe in that, but it's true. Cursed weapons exist, and this sniper might be cursed. However, 
I'll yeah. still risk picking it up. I'd risk picking it up for sure, man. I mean, it's, it's tough. The because I've seen someone get sniped with it early, so a lot of times cursed weapon truly means you can't kill anyone with it. So I, I've seen at least one kill with a sniper, so I'm not going to call it cursed just yet. And I think I'm actually on the wrong screen. I'm going to go with one down with one who has the sniper, gets the kill, and now what do you call that area where you just got the kill? Because I don't know. Oh, you mean no, BR plat, maybe? BR plat, yes. I, I would say that's yeah, BR plat would be a better call. Oh, no. contact. I never know what to call that. I know Locked I call those spots where they're throwing grenades at it. Honestly? But we're going to be very influential. Like, for one of the first Halo 5 streams, like, casting a tournament. That being said, uh, Dave. The calls we call are going to be, like, I, I see I see you have your gears right now. You're just like, man, I could get, like, a we clutch call out. We talked about this earlier. <laughs> I have always wanted a clutch call out. This weekend, we're going to invent one. And it's going to stick, all right? We're going to get something called top clutch. It's going to be up Isn't, in a high I spot. I thought the clutch spot was the, uh, the tree the on bottom guardian where you stand Game up with the ball. That's not top clutch, Dave. I thought that was the clutch spot, like on Halo 3, though. So. All right, we're playing a new game. We're moving on, all right? Just quit living in the past. <laughs> the past is all I got, man. <laughs> I'm living in the past. That's all I got. So, Sun won once again with the new sniper rifle. That sniper comes up every three minutes, but even if you're unfamiliar with the times with it, we do now have weapon pads, which is going to be great. It's going to familiarize new casual players with when our oh. weapons are coming up and where they're coming up and going to organize teams, especially in games through, like, you know, we've all played those matchmaking games where your teammates can have mics in, no one's communicating. That's it. But when you see a sniper coming up, everyone's going to be gathered around that part of the map. They're going to work together, get to control that I weapon. I like to it so my teammates don't go for it. That's it. So you're going to have teammates like Wes from time to time who are going to uh, make it a not great experience playing with him. But <laughs> at the same time, you're going to still know when weapons are coming up. And hopefully, in the end, on the bright side, I'll show put you in my backpack. Exactly. So you, you, you get, get the a, W, all right? And isn't that what really the matters? The, the W is really what matters. I will agree with that. But, uh, yeah, I'll Can't do it. I'll, I'd without go, W. I would, I would gladly go negative. Give me a shot at an overkill. Well, we do see the, uh, uh, choosing some very yeah, strange I, I angles. Like although he hits that shot. shot so I'm on <laughs> I have been seeing some very impressive snipe shots, so I'll agree. Some uh, some unorthodox angles coming out from them, but in the end, this game the job done. I mean, this I'm game is neck and neck at 23-22, halfway through. Yeah, and the uh, weird part about that though is that the, the sniper has mainly been in the hands of reality, reality check. So the other team that shows job. like they're not taking full advantage of their power weapon prowess, right? Because generally, if you have a sniper rifle, the majority of the game. Your team should have a bit more significant of a lead. You should be up more than by one or two kills. And that goes back to his positioning with his sniper. He was low close to that. He was getting no angles. I didn't like where he was sniping from down in the bottom basement area. I like sniping from where he's at right now. Yeah, I think I think You can watch that entire right side. With sniper is you go in those odd angles when it's a complete standoff and you can't find anyone okay. in normal position. So I agree with you there. But yeah, it just seems like uh, I don't disagree with that point, that position by Dramas, but I felt like maybe just misused the thruster pack or maybe pushed out a little Did too far. Did use the thruster pack. Yeah, so that's uh, I expected him to start trying to stay alive. He expected to no scope the camo guy jumping across. Yeah, and that's a uh, bad play. You need to obviously focus on your life. Your life is so important to get that sniper. Staying it's alive. Be a nuisance until you get taken down. Staying alive is another thing that will separate the amateurs through the pros. Yep. Well, the amateurs will try and always get the flash equipped when Weapon staying alive can do so much more for your team in that situation. Making the other team focus on for a couple more seconds could be the difference. Yeah, best example of that is you look at a top team like Evil G someone like Roy, arguably one of the best shots in the game ever. And he will back down more often than challenge. If he doesn't have it, that's Roy's shot. People are always crazy about Roy's shot. You know why Roy's shot's so good? It's because Roy's positioning is so good. Roy puts himself in a better position to win the fight than you. The angles that he takes, he has the advantage most yep. of the time. And because of that, he's able to win most of the fights, and it makes his shot look that much better. And he only jumps out and challenges when he has to, when he does, you know. He's generally back in the court. It's not like he's randomly jumping out in the worst of the map and challenging fights. Like you said, it's 
definitely does overshadow. Some people look at it as just like, oh, it's just pure PR skill, it's nothing else. Like, nope, just positioning, positioning, smart positioning, positioning, and rating. You want to learn how to position yourself? Watch some Roy on Twitch. <laughs> that man is dumb. Yeah. All these, remain. all these top players are going to be streaming on Twitch. But this weekend, you need to be tuned in to twitch.tv slash Iron Gaming TV, where we will be streaming Iron Gaming Daytona Beach event all weekend long. This is going to be the last match of the night. This might be the last game of the night if Suddeth and Reality Check are able to close this game out. But we are going to uh, stick on with the rest of the match. And like I said, be sure to tune in tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. where we'll be streaming all weekend. And actually, I said that. This just in. This just in. It is Breaking it's news. noon. So 12 p.m. Eastern daylight time. They must have heard me complaining about how tired I am. They're going to give me a couple <laughs> more hours of sleep. So we get some more sleep, which is a good thing. Absolutely. But on top of that, we'll be streaming all day long. I'm hoping uh, we got every issue. So all those complaints that you've given us so far, as far as any sort of uh, audio issues, will not please uh, give us that constructive criticism. We'll get those issues ironed out before tomorrow and have a great long stream tomorrow and some incredible matches. Reality check running away with this. <laughs> Eight kill lead they managed to come up without the sniper on my dad. Maybe the snipe on this map is not well maybe the snipe a the way they're using it. I was three. three. So they you never there's almost no situation you ever be like, oh snipes this is it. You can always put the sniper in your back pocket and not, you know, not use it. Though. There is your way to it. That was an interesting challenge by Sud too because he had a uh, had control camo, had position, and everything. Decided, you know, we're up. I'm just gonna jump out and challenge this. So at this point in the game, you're just trying to get trades. Yeah. Tra tra trading is a win. You need five. They need twelve. Yeah, I guess I guess I was just thinking that he had a decent amount of camo left, I thought. He had VR, he didn't have to challenge that fight. He wasn't in any danger, like he's getting John Cowell. That just seems like uncharacteristic tournament nerves from a less experienced player. That so I think someone like Suddeth, who's been to so many tournaments, should have the maturity to know, all right, I don't have to jump down the situation. And especially being used to how the radar plays a factor in this game. You can sit there, stand on top of catwalk, crouch walk. Get your, you know, your camel, you're going to be fully cloaked here in a second. Agreed. Sure that being said, place. you have to trade. Yes. You if can. you have to. You have but, to. But, yeah, if you're, if you're for sure challenging that. But I guess it's so much easier here in the commentary booth just uh, to critique things and say, like, Absolutely. in this situation, you should have stayed alive. It's like, dude, we have we have the eagle-eye view of every screen here and know what's going on. So and we know so that. We both, that. We've done this before. Yep. I mean, gaming-wise, we've, we've both been in these situations. you got to think on a split second what's the best play for your team. So I guess it's not too unfair for us to judge that. I should have played the ball, need. right? <laughs> Everyone knows that. Right now, they are down to the last kill. Sudden and Reality Check take in one to build end this, and they finish off the Tech 9 to end the series at 20 kills for Sud 1. I believe that's Sud 1, so great James. performance from him. And they are going to be moving on to pool play for sure. Now, that was our last game that we are streaming tonight, last match of the night. So, to close things out, tomorrow. Like I said, we are starting at 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I'll be tweeting out the stream. We'll all I'll be tweeting out the stream, the stream so you can follow, follow the stream here on Twitch. You can just click that follow button. It'll send you an email as soon you, as it goes live. Yep, send you notifications as soon as we're going live. And I will also, yeah, like I said, myself, Valen, DMAC, all the people here at Iron Gaming are going to be tweeting out the stream when we go live. As we're soon as it nice, goes live. We're going to have a nice, long stream tomorrow. But before we head out, I want to give a thanks to... Some people making this possible. First off, obviously Iron Gaming. We wouldn't be here without them. But we have a whole slew of sponsors <coughs> who are uh, helping this event. So you want to tell us a few jerky few XP? Things? I mean, that's protein. Gamers need their protein, right? <laughs> you got I, uh, I haven't to seen Gamer Crates yet, but they uh, they are different monthly or weekly crates I guess you get in they're more catered towards esports to my knowledge so I've I've not gotten one yet but if Gamer Crates wants to send me one I would love to check it out that's cool what else we got here we got G Fuel I mean what better than some energy to get going on a long night of gaming a long day of gaming that we have tomorrow G Fuel all right we got Resley who is uh they're gonna be a new online website where basically you can put up a new game profile. It's going to give you tips and tricks. Not tips and tricks, but I would say tips professionally and how to get within the game industry. Find out 
how other people got jobs, whether it's a programmer, whether it's a multiplayer lead designer. How to uh, make your it's passion a social media reality. platform that allows users to. We're all passionate about gaming, and it's all for gamers. So think of it as like the LinkedIn of gaming. Absolutely. How to make your pat? How to make your job part of your passion? So I'm gonna I'm gonna create a profile on there at some point. Tell my story of what I did to get to where I'm at within you know gaming because I've done. You know, I've competed. Everything. I've worked with you know companies like Microsoft Asia, helping do promotions out there. I've worked with Prima, co-authoring the strategy guide, so uh, I can tell my story how I made my end for different companies and what I did to get where I'm at within the gaming industry. So I'll be creating a profile on Resley at some point. I'm sure everybody has a lot to learn. <laughs> Gunner um, Optics. 